If you're happy with the same old ways of dating, if you enjoy sucking at communication, and you have no desire to improve your romantic life, then our podcast might not be for you. But if you want some out of the box ideas to deepen your current relationships, broaden your sexual horizons, develop a better understanding of yourself, or learn more about non monogamy, then you've come to the right place. I'm Jace. I'm Emily. And I'm Dedeker. And this is the Multi Amory Podcast. On this episode of the Multi Amory Podcast, we are talking about starting your own poly processing group. And with us today, we have two special guests that I'm very excited about, Nicole and Steve, who uh, started their own polyprocessing group that I've been to a couple times and was an awesome experience for me. I've talked about it on this show a little bit before, but we're going to get more into that, how they started it, what that's all about, the importance of having a support group to process things with, uh, and then also hopefully some tips about how you can go about starting your own and finding that kind of community. Uh, so welcome, Nicole and Steve. Welcome, Thanks. Guys. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so I guess just to start out, I would love to to introduce you a little bit more than I have already. Uh, so you two um, are poly. You're a yes. couple. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, how like how how does that fit in with your poly journey? How how long has that been going on? The basics. <laughs> <laughs> well, since the beginning of our relationship, which is mm-hmm. um, uh, very. Uh, next week we'll be celebrating three years. Wow! Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Which is not a long time, but it is a time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you agree? It is a time, Nicole. It is. It yeah. is. <laughs> it's so been a time. we've yeah. been and we've been open from the beginning. Uh, from the, my first conversation with Nicole, she mentioned uh, mon- Dan Savage's term monogamish. Yeah. Right. From our yes. first talk, so that's been from the get go. Then he immediately said, "Are you sure you just want to be monogamish?" And I said, "Oh." Well, maybe not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, what else is there? Yeah. What does that mean? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, uh-huh. cool. So um, well, part of what I really like about the the processing group, too, is that it's not about, um, you know, being experts and, like, giving advice to people. That it's just about, hey, we're all on this journey together, no matter how long we've been doing it. Because there are mm-hmm. some people in the group who've been poly for, like, 7, 10, 15 years, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. long time. And yeah. then other people that are brand new to it. Um, but everyone can still come together and share wherever they are on that journey, which is really cool. So I guess for the listeners out there, like you don't have to be some like veteran poly expert. We are definitely not veteran poly experts. (laughs) Uh, How long ago did you start the group? Uh, I guess nine months ago. Okay. So So yeah, it's a pretty new group. After a couple of years of, of, uh, of yeah, being poly, you started the group. Yeah. We probably started thinking about it about a year ago, and then I mm-hmm. think our first, I think our first group meeting was right around the first of the year. So okay, yeah, cool. We had been going to other groups through different things, different right. dis- poly discussion groups, and we right. found that we were wanting a certain kind of interaction, and mm. uh, so we decided to start it ourselves. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. that's awesome. So, so basically, it was. Because there are, in L.A., we have lots of poly meetup groups, mm-hmm. poly discussion groups yeah. out there uh-huh. um, of varying sizes, everything from a few people to 100 people or 200 people, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, I think in other parts of other parts of the country and of the world, there's not that abundance of poly groups. Uh, we did an episode maybe like a year and a half ago with a couple people in Arizona who started a group because they're in Tucson, uh, not not even in Phoenix, and so they were like, "There's really not. There's like a little poly community that's mostly people. Very little. <laughs> yeah, that, that, and they were like, it wasn't it wasn't really people that we felt like were our peers. And that's another thing too is if you're creating your own group, you can kind of choose how diverse or wide that group is. Uh, I think there's something to be said for diversity in a group. And also something nice about having them be your peers. You mm-hmm. kind of feel like we're dealing with similar things. I think I think there's benefits to both of those. But they started their own group, and now they have this this huge group in Tucson. Mm. Um, so I, I guess I'm saying this because even if there aren't poly discussion groups in your area, there are probably other people somewhere around who are looking for that. Absolutely. Um, so so that's awesome. Uh, and. Uh, 
okay, so to come back real quick, then also, um, in terms of like what what is it that you brought to the group uh, in terms of your your background in in training? I know Nicole, you've worked in education for a long time and bring a lot of that background as well. And mm-hmm. Steve, I know you're going through some more schooling and training right now that's also related to all of this. Could you share a little bit about that that background? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So I kind of brought two different parts of my life together in the group. One is in education, and I'm in progressive education that deals a lot with um, listening to children and developing the curriculum through a method of listening and questioning and analysis. So we don't Mm -hmm. have, we're not directing it as the teacher. We're kind of facilitating what comes out of it. So that's been 10 years of working that way. And then I'm also as part of another separate community having nothing to do with poly that's... Mm -hmm. um, that was around coming together as a group through this through process work um, with a few different influences um, from Arnie Mandel's work, which is deep democracy, to different therapies. And we've met twice a week for the last seven years, and we really go deeply into um, emotional lives, conflict between members. It's a lot about um, sort of speaking openly as a community, mm-hmm. and and, right. and we all bond on that front. So when I, I kind of had this image when I got into the poly world that like that would be there and and be that way mm. and there it, it was to some extent because there's so much communication that goes on right. but but I found I wanted to uh, like bring a little bit of that world into this new community that. So you use the term process work. Uh Could you just explain what What that that is? is? (laughs) I can try. (laughs) That is also not something I'm totally an expert on. Which, um, but it's the idea. I think, and feel free to jump in, Steve, if you like. Um, I think the emphasis being on the process that someone is going through, and sort of. The processes that are happening in the room real time between Mm, members. So, say, for example, um, and sometimes, like, in that other community, we'll decide, okay, we want to look at gender issues and and process that. And we'll kind of take on Mm. different roles and in Mm -hmm. real time look at what's happening between me and another person. But it might be... Say I, I I have a conflict maybe with maybe with Steve. Mm-hmm. We'll bring it up in the room and then we'll talk about it. But we're also looking at what is the underlying process that's happening between us right now. Or even if right. I'm just sharing something individually. So um, an attention to sort of uh, the emotional life and the undercurrents. And you're talking about the process that's occurring potentially between you and Steve or the process that's occurring between you and the person who you're speaking to at that Both. moment. Or okay. the whole room. What's that's happening really in the cool. room? Like, is the whole room silent right now because sure. we've hit an edge where people aren't comfortable speaking? Huh. We're going to, in, in a group that's oriented that way, we're going to notice that. Hey, wow. okay, we're silent. You know, someone brought up right. X, Y, and Z, and now the whole room's afraid. So yeah. we're looking at what's happening hmm. with us in this moment and not with, with, a, with, with not judgment or trying to make it one way or another, just sure. simply speaking to what is happening. Or even necessarily giving advice, but rather just like sharing in the experience. Yeah, absolutely. That's super cool. Absolutely. And uh, like I said, I'm not an expert, so I, if someone's right. listening to this, like, <laughs> yeah. you didn't hit it quite right. Yeah. But, you know? Yeah, yeah <laughs> no. we, we really, uh, we're, we're drawn to this kind of work for different reasons. And for me, um, it, it has a lot to do with shining light in the spaces and spots where I was taught not to do so. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of um, you know shadowy stuff that we sort of brush under the carpet a lot. This kind of work celebrates getting into those uh, dark cracks and crevices and um, uh, honoring and um, expressing vulnerability wow. and being in a room full of people where we can witness one another in those spaces that we normally hide from others. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, where we mm-hmm. feel like we need and to. And of know. course, in, a, in, in, in this kind of a non-traditional, um, non-monogamous approach to relationship, mm-hmm. um, we are actively and willfully <laughs> engaging with, yeah, I, right. a, you know, if we're going to have any kind of legs at all in this kind of exploration, the darker side of things that maybe we haven't had a lot of chance to look at in our lives. Mm-hmm. And the two of you, I mean, do you facilitate the group and you ask questions or what exactly do you do within the group? Per that's, se? that's a great question. Group. Yeah, because, I, because one of the things I was going to say, I, I feel like I brought to the table for this mm-hmm. group was confusion. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. You see, one of the impetus for me to 
start this group was because I knew that in my exploration of non-monogamy, I needed support. Mm, um, yeah. As I started to talk to my friends who weren't approaching a relationship in this way, to bring my sort of like pickle to the table. Exactly. Uh, if you pardon right. my pun. To, <laughs> <laughs> they would often, uh, you know, I'd get the dog hearing the strange sound kind of cock of the head, you know? Right. Yeah. And it so I realized still. I needed to, yeah, find some folks. So that's definitely a part of it. And, and, um, and then in terms of facilitation, I just want to say that we our aim is to... Uh, create a, a, a container of receptivity. Okay. So we're not trying to be active facilitators necessarily, but we're both kind of opinionated and you know and sort of like uh, wanting to um, uh, you know help ourselves and others understand stuff and a little bit alpha, I guess. So mm-hmm. so that does happen occasionally, but mm-hmm. the aim is to is to sit back to to allow uh, the genie to come forth, sure. which happens right. in a kind of, you know, there's a little bit of a board thing going on with a group situation where um, things are, are happening that as are, are, are a result of a group listening intently, mm-hmm. active yeah. listening. Yeah. It, 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 uh, if, it, for me, the, the group, the way it is, where it's just kind of, it, you started out, you talked to people about the intention of the group, mm-hmm. um, which I do want to be sure we, we cover soon. Uh, but then it's just sort of whoever just kind of feels moved can mm-hmm. start to share. And it just, for me, reminds me so much of like prayer circles in my huh. Christian upbringing. Interesting. <laughs> that oh, wow. just kind of, <laughs> in, in that or Quaker meeting. Exactly. Too, like, that, right? ex- yeah. totally. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that, that, um, there's something to it. Like there's a reason why prayer circles are done that way. Cause I yeah. think mm-hmm. there is something, you know, in, in Christian terms, it's about sort of waiting to be moved by the spirit and kind of letting the spirit guide the discussion group. And I think, but I think that is tapping into something that's there in terms of the way that we all just kind of humans are so adept at feeling each other out yeah. and yeah. in a group setting where you're coming in with a sense of listening and receiving and paying attention. There is sort of a cool thing that happens in that group of like, uh, you know, I'd like to share, but not right now. Could I mm-hmm. share later? And everyone kind of keeps that in mind, for example. Mm-hmm. Or, um, you know, there's just sort of a nice... When everyone comes together to care for each other, Yeah, you can just kind of let it happen. It doesn't have to be like, okay, we're going to have a list. Like, this is who talks first, or or this is our theme, or any it of that. Right, yeah, we're going to answer mega these, structure. these questions. Right. And I think um, one, one thing that I've seen from other groups, or even in my teaching, is when people start things, they feel the need to have a very strong structure because they're mm-hmm. worried that mm-hmm. people won't... Share Share, it won't go somewhere. It'll go in the wrong place. But I think mm. one of the keys to holding the kind of space you're talking about is that there is, you, of course, you can kind of meander. Someone could take over. You know, it's not. But there's no real wrong space to go in. It's yeah. keeping an attitude of what is actually in the room right now, and how can we? I'm, I'm also an improv performer, so it's reminding me <laughs> of improv. Go. Also, yeah. how can we go into that and exactly. right. that right. more deeply? But in, in process work, they talk talk about sensing the field, what's mm. in the field right mm-hmm. now, what's in the room, either being ignored or being expressed. So we yeah, are right. keeping that in mind as we work. Yeah. Yeah, and oftentimes when you when you, what, oftentimes well, use I statements what, when I, <laughs> when I go Another to uh, <laughs> seminars, yeah. Yeah. Uh, workshops, panel discussions, things like that. Uh, and certainly facilitators I've spoken to who have facilitated these types of things, mm-hmm. uh, th- they talk about, they've talked to me about how early on in their experience facilitating, they were nervous. And so uh, they had a lot of, they felt a lot of need to fill the air, like fill mm-hmm. the space. Right. Um, you know, we're, we're, the way we've come, I don't even really like the word facilitator, even though we, we use it. Um, really, our intention is to get away from that. Yeah. Um, because we've, uh, you know, a, a lot of people have been, we've been programmed to just go to these kinds of events and then be passive, sort of like someone is telling us where to go and guiding us and leading us. And, and we don't really do that. We, we're, we're looking for that uncomfortable <laughs> space. Yeah. We want us, yeah. ourselves and others to encounter it in, 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 in a way support whatever needs to come or wants to come through uh, in, those, in those kinds of moments. So That's our intention really, cool. really has a lot to do with a subtractive kind of process rather than an active, right. additive kind of uh, influence. Yeah. yeah. And I think that, that carries over into the next thing that I wanted to talk about, which is about um, what for me was very profound about going to the group. And that was, you mentioned earlier briefly the container 
that you create for the group. And I, I want to talk about that now, because uh, basically it was that I came into this group and I've been to other poly discussion groups and things like that. And, um, you know, and I'm someone who, who has a podcast where a lot of it is kind of advice based, right? Mm-hmm. We're, we're trying to share information, like give people tools, help them to solve some problems, stuff like that. And that coming into this group, one of the things that you mentioned very specifically at the beginning of each meeting is that it's not about giving advice. It's that maybe that could happen, but that's not where we should start. That's mm. not, you know, if you think of some advice, like hold on to it, sit with it for a while, and then maybe see if it's appropriate to share. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, uh, which kind of ties into a lot of other things. But if if I could first, um, do you think you guys could, could kind of give us the, the intro spiel for the group or oh, sort of a, sure. a quick summary of that like not not maybe the whole thing but just kind of a quick like this is what we set up so that people could kind of take that into their own groups absolutely yeah yeah <laughs> thank you um i think we talk about um that for us often when, especially with difficult emotions which was one of, is, it's one of the main points of the group is to explore the difficult emotions in poly uh, we always say we want to celebrate the good but mm-hmm. we found we needed support in the difficult parts so often what transforms difficult emotions is the act of listening and a deep mm-hmm. act of listening and yeah. um, I often tell a story about when I was first dating Steve he I was on the phone with him and I was nervous because it was our first phone call. And I realized uh-huh. I was listening to him only to think of the next thing I would say. Mm, and I yeah. thought, oh, I'm going to stop. And I stopped. And one second later, he said, God, you've really been listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> Which was <laughs> long. <laughs> but I, but, I, but, he but felt, it felt he as felt though. Shift. And yeah. so yeah. we invite yeah. that people listen wow. with a sense of spaciousness and to let go of specifically advice so that we can, that, that people can be really heard in a deep way because mm-hmm. we feel that that's what actually transforms people. And often advice giving comes because maybe I feel uncomfortable with the depth of pain that I'm witnessing mm-hmm. in somebody wow. sure. and I want to fix it. Or um, And so we ask people to... Sometimes you might have a really good piece of advice and plenty you've seen heard it. Plenty of good advice still happens. Absolutely, yeah. But, uh, but to, to, to not let that be your first response because it often is to see if there's something first that you can listen deeper but also maybe a deeper wisdom will come through wow. past the initial that's sort of really like, profound the, this, yeah. this came out of a response I was having and, and, and her as well to some of the early discussion groups that we were going to we found that there was plenty of people who were kind of new to poly or curious about it uh-huh. who were bringing up questions and issues and there was a lot of really well meaning veteran poly people who who's who were basically saying Oh yeah, you'll you'll get through that, and you'll see. It's just so wonderful. And we kept looking at each other like, when is anybody going to get to any of the substance right. of? Yeah. So at that point, I, I I realized because this is a profound, it's a profoundly radical thing to go non-monogamous. I mean, I really believe yeah. that we're yeah. going against the cornerstone of relationship. Um, you know, in, in the zeitgeist, yeah, yeah. socialization. Yeah. Yeah. So so I, I thought I I need a place where where th- where stuff can get a little bit more messy potentially. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's amazing just for communication one-on-one in general because so often you communicate and you feel as though you're not being heard and, like, this person doesn't understand you because, I'm, I, it, like you said, one may be thinking about what they're going to say next or what, mm-hmm. they're, what advice they're going to give to that situation. And, yeah, just even the fact that you were able to, like, feel that shift in her actually listening to you. That's really amazing to me and something mm-hmm. that I now really want to take into my <laughs> relationship. So thank you. Yeah. I love yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. Something else that uh, really struck me about the group is that you mentioned um, that when you're sharing something, when you're the one who's choosing to share, you can specify beforehand or maybe right after you shared whether are you looking for advice or do you yeah. just want to be heard? Like, do you want people to reflect it back to you and say, well, here's what I'm hearing about what you're saying? Or do you not want that? Cause sometimes you don't, sometimes you just want to be heard. And that also even could be mid advice. You could yeah. be like, you know what, actually, I'm sorry. <laughs> like I <laughs> actually don't want that anymore. I, I, yeah. I was mistaken before. I don't want to hear that. Yeah. And that to me brings up two super important things in I think in life in general, uh, but especially within like the sex positive community and the poly community. And one is uh, what we call meta communication, but it's basically telling someone the type of communication that you're hoping to achieve, like the Triforce of communication we've talked about before. 
um, to help them know how you want them to respond because they might not know if you want advice or you just want to be heard sure um, or if you want sympathy or or applause right they, they don't know unless you share that with them uh, and then the second part is that it's tied to consent mm-hmm. and the idea that in in active informed consent consent is not something that's given once and then is there forever mm-hmm. it's something that's constantly being given and can be taken away at any time for no reason that's and it's right. that idea of saying you know what actually i don't want this advice anymore and that that's okay mm-hmm. that there's not some shame in that it's not like but you said you did you know take backsies yeah. right like <laughs> <laughs> so i think it's really to me is really important because it helps foster that idea of consent and also better communication by kind of being as clear as possible about what you actually want to get out of it. Yeah. Um, so that for me was really powerful to, to hear that kind of container is the word that you use. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I and really it, like that. It, I, I love that, that linking it to consent. I'm going to steal that in the group. Oh my God. <laughs> um, I, assume, I assumed you'd already thought of it. <laughs> I had not. Um, but it came from a specific moment in one of our very first groups where I had mm. shared something and then I was getting a, a um, I was getting advice and I realized midway that I, I actually didn't want it. And right. I did stop and stop the person and, and, and say, like, I appreciate up. it, but I, I actually don't want yeah. it. And it ended up really deepening our friendship. Um, well, me that's and great. that person. And he later told me that it changed how he communicated with people and wow. made him reflect. And so it was this really, so that's where that piece came from. One of our first groups of being so like, yeah. Oh, I actually feel co- totally overwhelmed by you yeah. giving me this right now. Yeah. Well, and I think it's so powerful too, because it makes it about what you want to receive rather than if we felt like we had to sit through it, it might make me be like, Oh, I fucking hate that guy that just kept giving me that <laughs> advice. Yeah. Like, even <laughs> yeah. though they might have the best of intentions, sure, yeah. Yeah. but it kind of, brings that power back to you to be like, you know what, actually, I'm going to take ownership of what I want and don't want out of this. So that's part of what we're trying to encourage yeah. is that self-advocacy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, you know, like I said, navigating the terrain that, that, I, that I am aiming to navigate and that I am trying to hold space, there's another great phrase we can talk a bit about too, yeah. for others to navigate, is uh, that vulnerability, that shadowy stuff is... Uh, vo- is uh, elusive and feral, mm-hmm. and um, it, it, it can it can go away just as oh sorry it can go <laughs> yeah. away just as soon as it's as it pops up, and and right. as, and oftentimes I find for myself when, when advice comes in that's very cerebral and intellectual and I don't feel like someone's listening to me mm, that that kinda, feral cat goes yeah, darts back that. into the alley mm-hmm. and is gone, yeah. um, and so these kinds of these kinds of things lay the groundwork uh, for. Um, allowing those 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 things to come into the light a little bit more, so All that right. we can learn more about ourselves. This just makes me think we could do a whole episode about like cats and dogs as like metaphors for how we, <laughs> <laughs> feral cat. How we it was so viral, right? Yeah. Just oh, put a, it'll put be a good cat video yeah. with it. Oh, <laughs> yes. yes, you're right. That'll be a video. <laughs> explain explain communication and and seduction and cuddling and everything Aww. in the framework of. Pet dogs and cats. I love it. <laughs> but I love the idea of consent as an ongoing, active, alive, organic process. Right. Because many of these things that, that we encounter when we talk about emotions and our mm-hmm. inner lives are not static principles that we can no. open up Merriam Webster to page 542 and get a <laughs> right. definition for what jealousy means. Yeah. Yeah. Like these are pointers in the direction of places where we can have inquiries with ourselves mm-hmm. about our own feelings, but there's a lot of gray going on there. Oh, yeah. You know? yeah, for sure. So consent as an active alive thing it certainly right. is a wonderful thing and just quickly say that SPLA which is the group under the is the umbrella of the group that w- where we have this meeting to begin with right. is a is a really a great group that advocates for self advocacy and nice. for um, this co- idea of consent being an ongoing active yeah there was I, it must have been a couple of months ago but we did an episode where I talked about going to the SPLA orientation and that consent exercise that they do about saying you know practicing saying no and practicing mm-hmm. negotiating and all of that is really really powerful I'd love to do more on that we actually might we we just met someone yesterday who might be a guest to come on and talk about consent oh, yeah. soon so yeah. lots of exciting things coming up um, okay is it okay if I change topics Absolutely. a little bit here okay so Something that has come up in both of the discussion groups that I've gone to is language and the power of language, how that the words that we use affect the way that we think and the way that other people think. And Nicole, you, this is something that you've 
actually studied at work with with children Mm -hmm. um and i think that that's seeing the way like children are so much more transparent than adults are which is which is really awesome about (laughs) them and i think the stuff that that you were sharing about children i'm like fuck it's so it applies to us as adults too we Mm -hmm. just are so much less like aware of it like it's so we we hide it under all these other things. Uh, could you could you share that the thing about possessiveness yeah, that absolutely. you talked about before? A few years ago, we were doing research at the school at uh, kind of the the um, communal life in preschool because preschool is extremely communal. Like we oh, intentionally wow. put three shovels in the sand area so they have to negotiate and uh, negotiate that. And there's no other point in life really that I think there's so much uh, communal dynamics going on as in a preschool classroom. So we started looking at what what practices promote that and what practices Hmm. take away. And one of the things we realized watching video of a teacher was, of course, language makes Hmm. a big difference. And so there was a little girl who they were digging uh, in the yard for bugs, and they'd all Uh set their shovels down to discuss their strategy for bug hunting. (laughs) And and they all came, and some children grabbed different shovels, and some children wanted the same shovels. And the Uh. teacher said to the little girl, is that your shovel? And... You, you could see in the video this look in her eye like, yes, that's my shovel. I own that. Right. And then he reframed it. Uh, is that the shovel you were using? Taking ownership out of it. Mm-hmm. And we started to experiment with that. And we realized if we took ownership out of um, objects or even artwork, children were painting. It was just the painting you're working on. Can someone else join you? There was mm-hmm. much more fluidity between for children and much less ownership and much less... They're much more likely to share? Much more, yeah. A lot less, less, that's mine! Which you get a lot with two and (laughs) three-year-olds. But we realized so much of our language has ownership embedded in it and uh, and how we were reinforcing it as teachers. And so we have a practice now of not as much as possible. Is that the chair you were using? Is, you know, that Mm -hmm. kind of thing. But it's it's so embedded that it's very, very difficult. So we're constantly trying to reframe it. And the thing that for me was really powerful when you shared that is something that I had already been thinking about a little, and this kind of gave me more, like, framework to put it in, is... The language we use around our partners, yeah, yeah my, my, my partner, my yeah. girlfriend, my, my fiance, my girl, whatever, my yeah. right, my 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 my. We we say it all the time. It's like yeah. so part of our our language, and it's so much and part of the romance. I, I listened to your mm-hmm. romance episode a few right. weeks ago. Romantic, yeah. oh, you're mine, and it feels right. it can kind feel being, so being owned. Yeah, but I feel like when you use that language of my. Maybe we maybe there is some romance to it, or, or we we've been taught that there is. Yeah. But I think it also makes it then a lot harder to share. Yes. Like it makes <laughs> the threat of someone else a lot more real because it's yours. Yes. Instead of just the person that you were using. <laughs> 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 right. Like that's we were talking about that earlier. You guys yeah. had an experience of kind of that that sort of sharing, right? Of like. Yeah. This is the person I'm using, right? <laughs> yeah, we were uh, we were having a meal with um, with um, a woman that I am that I'm seeing now, and Nicole already knew her, but we were we were kind of getting together for the first time under the auspice of polyamory, you know. And right. Nicole was going into that same anecdote about the school. And uh, how did it come out exactly? I can't remember. It just came out with that that statement of, oh, right. this isn't my man. This is just the man I'm using. <laughs> and then the woman I'm dating said, me too. <laughs> we just, right. But we right. did reframe it since it sounds so terrible. We, we came up with a nicer one, which is, this oh. is this is this is a man I'm choosing. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Yeah. Yeah. Choosing yeah. instead of I using. Like yeah. 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 I mean, nice. I, I could go, I would if. If I would go, I've been going off on the verb to have and the possessive pronouns now yeah. for years. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I think that, that, that I, I'm under the kind of working assumption right now that language is magic. Yeah. yeah. And that we actually don't understand the degree to which it is casting spells and injecting potions mm-hmm. and putting us into altered f- frames and states of mind um, just by the words themselves. The yeah. words themselves, they're just words, but. They aren't. There's, they're carrying connotations and meanings, and right. and I would love to see a, a, a movement away from, like I said, the, my, the possession yeah. kind of orientation. For sure. My car, my <laughs> mind, my psyche, my yeah. feelings. Mm. Like I mean, it's it, all. It's pervasive. It's ubiquitous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. And this is Dedeker and I also frame a lot of things in terms of 
meditation and like Buddhist teachings and mm-hmm. stuff. And it goes right along with that as well, both in terms of the process work of being aware of what's happening without attaching meaning to it. If it's like, hey, the whole room got quiet or we just touched on something uncomfortable, not putting a value judgment of like, well, this is bad. That's not OK. Yeah. But it just it is. Let's acknowledge it yeah. and yeah. like live in the world with it, but not try yep. to control it. Or, and also or keep in mind that to say it. I don't want to put a value judgment on it <laughs> sure. is we're, we're going to go meta on you. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so anytime totally. that we're saying, no, I shouldn't be that way or mm-hmm. I shouldn't do this. Yep. This is what I'm trying to move away from as mm. well. Uh-huh. I need to embrace everything that's coming through, at least in my awareness, maybe wow. not necessarily in what I'm expressing or articulating uh-huh. but I, some, the, yeah. play, the, sh- the the shoulds and the should nots this mm, is terrain to sure. be looked at with I, a critical thinking yep. lens at all times my well, I'm, I'm bad about it in practice but I, I wish we could abolish should from the language entirely this I, leads, I'm on board with this you this leads yeah. into the idea of, of, awesome, of the awesome poly archetype that you uh, right. may not want to get this, into yes, I do no, close we with definitely this. want <laughs> yeah. to yeah, because yeah. It, I know like if I ever have an issue in my my poly life and then I'm like, well, I'm supposed to be an authority on this in some respect. Mm-hmm. And how can I have these issues and still call myself an authority? Perfect. So I know that we wanted to talk about that briefly. Yeah. It's, yeah it's, how did the two of you feel? It's come about up a that? lot in the discussion yeah. groups. Oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Nicole started that I want to be awesome poly lady thing during our processing. Like. It came out one time when we were when we were getting deep into some some difficult feelings. Um, you know, I think you said at one point, like, "I'm just so upset. I I want to be awesome, Polly lady." You know? <laughs> yeah. Yep. I've yeah. felt that many times. Yeah. 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 And we've been unwinding that a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, and and really what it, where it's taking me is deeper into the places of my vulnerability. Mm-hmm. You know, if if there's shame or embarrassment or shoulds coming up, it's a good little bobber on the surface of the water. That that's that that down there tugging on that hook is some vulnerability that wants to right. come to the surface and be witnessed and be loved and be expressed. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for me, awesome Polly was just. I started to see. Oh, I mean, it's part of my wheelhouse of my psyche to want to appear competent at all times. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. So I have an extra relationship with the, with awesome Polly. I'm starting to imagine her as this person in my <laughs> right. mind, but it's. It's just I don't want to feel what I'm feeling right now, mm-hmm. I think, is what I realize. So when she starts to come up, I'm like, oh, okay, what what am I actually feeling that I don't want yeah. to feel in this yeah. moment? Which is often that I want to possess mm-hmm. somebody entirely yeah. and put them in a cage and never right. let them, you know, that kind of thing. And so allowing, just like we do in the process group, mm-hmm. and allowing Austin Polly to have her place also in me (laughs) well i think it's it's almost like this second level too of something that happens you know when we share our poly struggles with our monogamous friends or family like you were talking about earlier steve that it's their response is going to be like either just confusion or well yeah duh because you're not supposed to share yeah or (laughs) right or or like obviously it's because you know sort of pathologizing because you're doing it wrong right Right. it's because you're doing this fucked up thing yeah Um, (laughs) they don't have a context for it at all unfortunately but but then there can be this thing even when you're in the poly groups now you have Mm -hmm. peers who aren't going to say it's because poly but but you will sometimes i think some personalities are maybe more vulnerable to this than others um of kind of needing to feel like all these people are expecting me to have my shit together all yeah. the time, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Like, different kind of pressure. Yeah, I've been. Yeah. I really felt I had a hard time the last few weeks. Went into some like gnarly jealousy, and I felt mm. very. Mm-hmm. I did feel very alone because I felt like with my monogamous friends, I couldn't, and that I. I think it's my own mind, but there's like a badge of honor to getting past certain phases of jealousy that sure, I don't feel yeah. like I have, but I can recognize that other people have, and mm. I'm like, just want to get that. <laughs> Girl Scout jealousy oh, badge. Wow. <laughs> right. 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 Little patch. Yeah. Like, I, I don't want to talk to my poly friends, and I don't want to talk to my monogamous wow. friends. So luckily, right. we had poly process group, and yeah, and I, there yeah. was space it's... to share and to share that that I was feeling that yeah. Yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. I've already like had some really profound experiences with that, and want to. I'd really like to start a group that's up here because you guys live a little bit far from me. Mm-hmm. Um, but to start a group up here that's kind of a similar thing, like I think it's such an important thing. And I like that the group stays small. Yeah. I think that's really important. Um, so for those of you out there, uh, if you're wanting to start a group like this, you can absolutely do it, right? Like, absolutely. It's, yeah. it's something that you can put out there. And even if you only have four or five people or however many, maybe even three, like mm-hmm. 
that's still going to be a powerful experience and it, and it will grow over time um, to, to, you know, now you guys have, it's capped at 15 people, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. every, every list. month you yeah. have like 30 people on the wait list. Yeah. Like yeah. it's, it, people yeah. really want that because it doesn't exist a lot and, of places. And re- I really like to think and believe that it's because of what we're not doing. Mm-hmm. Not because of what Nicole and I are doing, per yeah, se. Right. That's really but it's, it's, yeah, it's, that again, it's that subtractive yeah, thing. Like yeah. that. You know, we're removing a lot of the, the, the impediments or trying to create a container, hold space, if you will, that removes the impediments to the bullshit, yeah. expression. Right. And Lord knows... And I don't know why I said Lord, because <laughs> I'm not, but God knows. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say God or Lord. I'm going to say Allah knows and Buddha knows right. that, um, I, that we need a cohort as we unwind and rewrite mm-hmm. the code that we've been living under for generations and yeah. generations and generations. For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I especially like that, that three person because the other process group I'm in is... It's 40 people. It's a closed group. It's not open to anyone who comes. But right. every once in a while, because we've been going seven years, there's like four people that show up for a meeting because right. they happen twice a month. And sometimes at first people would feel bad, like, oh, people aren't showing up. Right. But uh, but then it's well known that the four people, four person meetings are the best ones because yeah. you can go so deep and it yeah. gets so intimate. Yeah. So now people are like, oh, I miss the four person yeah. meeting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. That's great. All right. Thank you guys so much yeah, for coming you. and being yeah. on the show. Thanks, Thanks for both. having us. I hope that uh, other people can start groups like this because it's been a really amazing thing for me. And I really appreciate you guys for, for making that a thing that I could discover. Thanks. Oh, thank I you. appreciate you for, <laughs> for holding for this show for what you're doing, too. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. If any of you have questions out there about you creating your own groups or anything that you want us to cover on the show, you can write to us at info at multiamory.com or you can... Uh, write to us on Twitter at Multiamory <laughs> on Facebook uh, on uh, you know all the things um, all the places uh, we'd love to hear from you uh, check out our Patreon p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash Multiamory join the discussion there in our monthly video discussion groups we've actually started incorporating some of these ideas from the polyprocessing group and it's been really awesome yeah. it's really cool we'd love to have you as part of the community thank you so much and we will see you next week sayonara bye <laughs>